Hello, my name is Ryan Hicks and I have chosen for my topic how to best foster creativity in the curriculum. The purpose of this presentation is to give you, the viewer, the context of the issue, present the current challenges, and to look for practical solutions. It is my hope that after viewing this presentation, you will feel more comfortable introducing creativity into whatever subject you teach and that you will feel empowered as an educator to make curriculum come alive. It is also my hope that your students will learn ways to empower themselves in the discovery of new knowledge and the sense of pride and accomplishment that comes from their hard work. What is the issue? Well, there's... probably most people know Sir Ken Robinson from his TED Talk videos, but Ken has also written many books on the subject of creativity. And the very first thing Ken talks about in any of his speeches is that in order to be creative, you have to be okay with making mistakes. Making mistakes is a part of the creative process. And being okay with making mistakes is what one needs to do in order to be creative. Do we encourage that it's okay to make mistakes in school? Far from it. In fact, academic success in school is based on the fewest amount of mistakes that one can make. When you look at it, when students are applying for scholarships and marks are very tight, that pressure to not make a mistake can almost be overwhelming. So much so that one might in fact lose sight of knowledge and learning in a fear of just making the fewest mistakes possible. When looking at the question of how to best foster creativity in the classroom, we need to look at the teacher's own ability and their sense of how willing they are to take on creativity and being creative. The thing about being creative is there is no necessarily one right way to do it, and it's a difficult thing to assess. Many teachers feel this pressure to accurately assess and are accountable in their assessments. They might feel the pressure to exclusively deal with assessments that are measurable and, if challenged, could back them up with quantitative data. The problem with creativity is that the best way to assess creativity is not necessarily by a numeric means or a sort of measurement, but it's an experience and an area of growth. And when we're talking of personal growth, that is a very difficult thing to measure and to put a number or a mark to. As political parties decide funding for education, the direction of education has become more and more political. The purpose of education is shifting from the well-being and development of a child to pushing a person through a system where they will develop marketable skills in the hopes of eventually obtaining employment. Employment not based necessarily on the person's interest, but the ability and sometimes the easiest path to making enough money to sustain a desired lifestyle. The policy of No Child Left Behind started in the USA in 2001 by President George Bush. The policy was an attempt by the Bush administration to reform what they felt was a broken system where not everyone received the same quality of education. There was no way to measure schools or find out how well a school or a division was doing. The act was intended to provide quality education for all by measuring schools on test scores. These test scores would be published to the public, so the public would know how their local school ranked nationally. What it did, however, was put pressure on educators to measure through learning test scores and other quantitative means. When creativity is used in the classroom, the assessment for how successful things run are often based on qualitative data. This back-to-basics approach saw an increase in the schedule of math and sciences. But when they increased the schedule of math and sciences, they had to take something away from another class. Generally speaking, the classes that were hit the hardest were humanities and arts classes. These classes, just because knowledge is printed in a curriculum document, does not necessarily mean that that will bring meaning to a student. It's the teacher's personality, their experience, and their creativity that help bring the information and knowledge from the curriculum into the student's world. And hopefully it is the teacher's ability with their own creativity to find ways to empower the student to f make the curriculum a part of their lives too. Mark Runco 
in his article on creativity in the annual review of psychology, made the point of, as the world becomes more technology dependent, it is becoming more important to come up with original ideas, things that haven't been thought of before, new ways of thinking, new connections. All this implies that creativity is more important now as a marketable skill than ever before. Creativity is a useful and effective response to evolutionary change. It is estimated that in 10 years, three quarters of the jobs that will exist have not yet been invented. They will be brand new jobs, brand new ideas. A hundred years ago, the measure of a nation's power was its strength or its ability to produce goods. More and more, the measure of power is ideas and creating. While no child left behind is an American policy, many provinces in Canada have adopted similar philosophies. In a 2012 study, the National Arts Education Association of America has found some positive changes. One of the changes that they have found is that teachers have a renewed sense of looking at the content in the curriculum and really looking at what is important. This back to basics approach has made teachers realize that we can't be all things to everyone and can't do all things and a renewed commitment to content from the curriculum. Where do we go from here? Here are some suggestions for fostering creativity in the curriculum in your classroom. Some teachers have a mistrust of themselves being able to be creative. Assume that you're the audience, the teachers, need to be made comfortable with creativity in the classroom. Have small, specific goals, such as students will create their own problem solving, questions that relate to their interests. Try cross-curricular approach whenever possible. This will create meaning and make connections to their other learnings. Give the students a voice. Listen to their responses and try to include their voices in designing curricular units. Encourage and model that disagreement and discussion are natural and a part of the creative process. Many teachers avoid creativity as it often can lead to increased tensions and difficulties in maintaining order and sometimes no clear answer or product. The inherent pressure to come up with neat and tidy answers for all problems and teachers giving up control. Every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist when you grow up. Thank you for viewing my presentation on creativity in the curriculum.